Hello everyone, Benji Sales here and welcome to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be doing my July NPD preview video, which means of course that we're gonna be looking and analyzing uh, the upcoming release for the US market in terms of video game sales. Now, I wanted to get this video up earlier, I'm sorry, but I've been extremely sick the last few days, like crazy, crazy sick, I've been battling it fever the whole nine yards so I wasn't able to get this up as quickly as I wanted to but we still got it up before the release now there's a whole bunch to talk about with July especially on the software front you know we saw big new releases for the switch like Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 um, as well as Fire Emblem Three Houses we saw multi-platform releases like Wolfenstein Youngblood as well as Madden 20 and of course as always there's hardware to break down and talk about as well so should be a pretty exciting exciting month to look at all in all. First, let's jump into hardware. So when looking at hardware for July, it's going to be probably pretty much the main story that we've seen for most of the year. I know my hardware breakdown segments have not been that exciting of my NPD preview videos, but that's because frankly, we are in a very consistent pattern here and I expect that to stay pretty much somewhat the same except for there is one interesting thing uh, to break out here that I noted last month and which did actually come true. And that is that the switch has started to slow down in terms of its year over year gains, right? So we saw through the first chunk of the year, you know, Switch was up by these really big double digit percentages um, each month. You know, it was showing huge growth year over year. Last month, though, I did note that while I expected it to be up year over year, it was only going to be, you know, slightly, that, that it was going to be harder to be up by a large margin year over year. And I think that we're going to see a little bit of the same of that again this month, despite, you know, some big releases uh, switched it actually pretty good last summer like like it was selling pretty strong and I think we see the same thing here again so I think we do see it up year over year but I'm not expecting like these massive huge you know type gains that we saw in some of these other earlier months of the year and I think they're gonna be a little bit smaller so up switch year over year number one selling console for the month but not like crazy you know huge boosts um, in terms of PlayStation and Xbox again same story that they've been on this entire year down year over year um, Xbox for sure by double digit percentages by a pretty good amount PlayStation I think is going to be down by a pretty large margin as well but it did get a uh, price cut pretty much nationwide right you saw it at pretty much all the major retailers GameStop Target Best Buy, etc., all had the slim for two forty nine ninety nine instead of two ninety nine ninety nine. And you know, as we've been talking about throughout these videos, um, you know, this entire year, Sony's been very, very conservative in terms of price cutting and price promotions. And this is really the first time we've seen a really wide, really large price drop on the system. So I do think that is going to help because you know, as I noted during Days of Play, uh, you know, it was just the Pro that was discounted, right? It wasn't the slim. There was a new bundle for the Slim, but it didn't get a price drop on it. It was just the Pro. This is the first time we see the Slim really get super wide price drop. So I think that that might help uh, you know, mitigate its drop year over year. It is going to still be down. I don't think you're going to see it flat or up year over year, but I think out of the two between Xbox and PlayStation, you're going to see Xbox with a larger decline than what Sony is going to experience. So I think, you know, to, to sum it up, Switch number one, slight increase year over year, PlayStation 4 in second place um, with a drop year over year, but maybe not nothing crazy, right? No, like 30, 40% drops. I don't think we're going to go that high on PlayStation. And then Xbox coming in in third place um, with pretty significant declines year over year. So let's dive into software and I ran my poll like I do basically every single month on software. I haven't been running as many hardware polls because frankly, like I've been saying, it's pretty consistent. So it's not been super interesting to run polls on that, but I do it on software every month. And I always ask you, uh, what do you think is going to be the best selling game of the month? Now, uh, the results were interesting because we had three games here that, that were pretty close in terms of what you thought. So Super Mario Maker 2 
came in at 29% of the vote. Uh, Madden 20 came in with 30% of the vote. And taking the lead, the poll, the number one position was Fire Emblem Three Houses with 36% of the vote. And uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 came in in last with only 4% of you thinking it will take the top place for the month. Um, 648 of you voted on this. Thanks. I, I really appreciate getting the large amounts of votes and, and comments on these videos um, because I really like to hear and see what you all are uh, thinking this industry is up to. So let's dive into some of your comments really quick before I give my predictions on that. Uh, Evan P here saying it's going to be Madden. John Welfare, Madden hits number one. Even if Nintendo shared digital, Madden with just a couple days still comes out on top. And bonus from Welfare here, it'll also be number one in August. By the way, um, John Welfare is extremely smart, extremely intelligent, one of the best number crunchers out there that, that I know personally. I consider him a uh, pretty good friend as well. So if you don't follow John Welfare, I, I don't normally do these like shout out things, but if you're interested in sales and breaking that stuff down, uh, I recommend giving at Welfare Queen here a follow. Uh, good, good person and very, very knowledgeable. Uh, Peter420, Madden NFL 2020, despite minimal improvements every year and it being just a roster update, it will still sell millions upon millions of copies as it always does. Falcon Box, I just want to say Madden, but if I remember correctly, only the expensive Superstar Edition came out in July while the standard was August 2nd. And then Zdark here, uh, very astute point. Um, August 2nd is actually part of July tracking this year. So it's only going to have a few days between the Superstar and the regular edition, but Madden, both versions uh, are included in NPD this year. Very important to note. It's not just the Superstar. You'll also have a little bit of the regular edition. Uh, Dom's playing here, another, another great video very intelligent uh, salesperson uh, posts a, a funny gif of John Madden celebrating as number one. Um, Benji here, I have Fire Emblem, but Madden will be hard to beat. Um, not sure how to pronounce this. I really apologize for, for mispronouncing this. Lelouch. Um, 0612 Madden, especially since it's only game with digital tracked among the options. Very good point. Nintendo software has no digital. Uh, Noah Chill, probably Madden, Ultra Popular, um, Best Sold Exclusive, will be Super Mario Maker 2. I like that, throwing in an extra prediction. So Madden on top, but Super Mario Maker 2 is Best Exclusive. Um, and then, you know, goes on, Noah goes on here to add a little bit more than that. Fire Emblem is going to have a great launch, but, you know, it released at the very end of the month. Kermit the Frog, <laughs> that's amazing. My heart says Fire Emblem pulled through, but my brain says Madden. Um, Slash Briz here, Madden, Sonic Pulsar, I want it to be Fire Emblem, but I voted Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, Matt, my heart wanted to say Fire Emblem, but I can't imagine it's not Super Mario Maker 2 or Madden, so I voted Mario Maker. And finally, last comment here that I'm including West Egg. If it's not Madden, it would be a massive upset, but it will probably be Madden. Still excited to see some PR on Fire Emblem. Thanks everyone for your comments. I like to include your thoughts on my videos as well because a hell of a lot of you are really, really smart. And you know, you guys help support me. I want to help support you. So getting your name out there and your thoughts as well. Hopefully it'll get y'all some more followers and, and you know help spread the word about the things that you do as well. So let's break it down right what what am i expecting on software what are my predictions what are my expectations well you know there's a lot to dive into first of all let's just kick it off with what i think is going to be number one for the month and that's going to be madden 20 yes i know madden had only a very short amount of time of tracking but madden is absolutely enormous and as you know other users pointed out in their comments it's also the only version that the only game at least out of these major new releases that's going to include digital sales right so fire emblem is not ultimate alliance 3 is not mario maker 2 is not because they are nintendo first party and nintendo does not uh publicly release that data with the npd group on their first party title so that is not included in the tracking and madden yes even with that very very short amount of time on the market i do think it's going to be enough to put it in the number one position so Madden, Madden 20, number one for July is my prediction. Now, there's three big Nintendo exclusives I'm all expecting to be in your top five, but I'll be honest, it's kind of hard to predict where they're going to fall, except for that I think 
Mario Maker 2 is probably going to place the highest of the three. I think it's going to be Madden 20 at number one, then probably, again, probably Mario Maker 2 at number two for the month, and then I'm expecting Fire Emblem Three Houses and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 to place in your top five for the month as well. So I think you're going to see three Switch exclusives in the top five. Now, the main reason I'm expecting Mario Maker 2 to uh, place second and not Fire Emblem Three Houses is Fire Emblem experienced massive shortages in the U.S., huge. I cannot even stress to you how large these shortages were. They were at multiple retailers. I am provided data from all over the place, luckily, uh, through lots of contacts in the industry. I basically usually have a pretty good view of most of the industry, to be honest with you. And I had people from various retailers all sending me stock, um, all sending me information about what they were looking at, what their shipments were looking at, also through the things that I've seen. You know, shortages were very, very widespread, very large, and I think that's going to prevent it from being the best selling Switch exclusive for the month. Um, I still think it's going to place in your top five. I think it's going to have an amazing performance, but I do think those shortages will heavily impact its performance in MPD. I think it could have had a lot more impressive debut if we had digital included, but unfortunately Nintendo's still not there. In regards to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, you know, for an exclusive game, uh, I think this is going to do really, really well. So we've seen that the Marvel name alone doesn't always guarantee high sales, right? We saw this um, with uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, right? They slapped the Marvel name on there, but the game sold very poorly. We've also, though, seen the inverse in that Marvel Spider-Man sold amazing. Now, of course, that's not just because it had the Marvel name on it. That's my point. It was also that Insomniac Games delivered an incredible experience. The game's amazing. Marketing was on point, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, the Marvel name definitely helps. The IP definitely helps. But at the end of the day, it still has to be a really good game with really good marketing that people want to play, right? And Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 did not have the best marketing, um, but it's had really great word of mouth. And from what I saw on my end, it was showing pretty good legs throughout the month too, uh, throughout the tracking that's included at least. So I am expecting this to do very well for an exclusive for just being on one platform, right? Just on Switch. Uh, I think it's going to do really well for itself. So still in that top five, you know, where exactly, like I said, Mario Maker, Fire Emblem, and Marvel shake out. Not 100% sure on that, but I do expect all three of them in your top five and all to be huge successes for Nintendo. Rounding out the top five, I think is going to be Grand Theft Auto V. It had the huge new update with the casino, and that game just always sells well. So in these summer months where you don't always have like you know super, super huge games, even though we had some pretty big ones this month, uh, I do expect Grand Theft Auto V to probably place in your top five as well. Um, in terms of Wolfenstein, Youngblood, from what I've seen, and again, I don't see everything, but I do see a lot. From what I've seen, the game is off to a soft start. Another in a long string of Bethesda titles to not exactly have the best um, sales. So uh, I ex expect this to be in your top 20. I do not expect it to be in your top 5. And I'll go out on a limb and say I don't expect it in your top 10. Or if it is in your top 10, very low. Uh, I'll be shocked if it's above like an 8, right? If it comes in a 9 or 10, I'll be like, okay, I can see it. Um, but I'd be shocked if this is above 8, right? If this is like number, if this is top 5, I don't buy it. It's not going to be top 5. But if it's like seven even i'd be shocked um the game just again this is a revenue based chart and it is a cheaper game and also it doesn't seem to have been generating a ton of sales so that one will very much surprise me if it's super high on the list other things to note i'm sure you'll see probably rainbow six siege popping in there with great legs minecraft popping in there with great legs and yeah, I think that's pretty much going to sum it up. Oh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 uh, hit this month. Don't expect a lot from it. Um, top 20 probably, but uh, again, I'm not expecting this to be a high-ranking top 10 title. So to sum it up, 
final summary of software for the month madden 20 number one for the month i believe number two probably super mario maker 2 in the rest of that top five i'm expecting fire emblem three houses marvel ultimate alliance 3 and grand theft auto 5 not exactly sure the order of that just because it's kind of tough with fire emblem shortages i'd be a lot more for sure on where I would place each one of those if it wasn't for the drastic shortages, but I think that's your top five and a soft start for Wolfenstein Youngblood and uh, you know, pretty mediocre launch for Dragon Quest Builders 2 as well. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for my July NPD preview video. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Uh, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Helps the channel out a bunch. I am Benji Sales. I usually talk about video game sales and things like that, but I also talk about gaming in general as well because, hey, I freaking love video games. Follow me on Twitter, at Benji Sales, if you don't already. And uh, thanks again for tuning in, everyone. I will see you in the next video.